All right, what is up, fam? This is your host, Darren Hansen, uh, owner, founder, and coach at Hansen Athletics. Thanks for hopping on. I appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to this episode. So today I wanted to answer uh, a question that I got on Instagram, and I've actually got a couple questions regarding uh, how we're using isometrics in the gym, uh, using this type of muscle action for performance, and implementing it with our youth athletes. Um, it's been something we've been really working on and focused on in the last year or so with our athletes. And we've had great results, uh, particularly when it comes to speed, change of direction and uh, athletes ability to fire quickly, which if you are familiar with um, some of the data on sports, the athlete that's able to produce force the quickest or get to a peak faster is typically uh, having great success on the field even if they're not as strong or they're not able to produce as high of forces, if they can get to a higher force in a shorter amount of time, uh, you might have an athlete that is uh, potentially weaker in the weight room, but performing better on the court or on the field. So specific question, coach, where do you like to program your isometric work? I know some like programming them after a concentric, concentric focus phase, but it, can it be used in an in-season focus to reduce time and soreness? Uh, isometrics in the platform in this platform or something newer to me. Thank you. So to answer that question specifically, um, we use them in, in a lot of different ways. It's more for us about getting them in, uh, in season. It's a great way to not load the athlete too much, but fire up the nervous system. So, uh, for example, out of season, we may actually have um, or in season, we may actually have the isometric be the main strength movement paired with a couple other things. Um, but most of the time, what you'll see is we will use our concentric focused or our lifting movement as a compound movement like you would out of season. But we keep that lighter and we focus more on the how much force we're producing and how quickly. So we have bar sensors and we do velocity, bar velocity. So if you're unfamiliar with that, it's basically instead of tracking uh, total weight on the bar. Uh, the weight on the bar is dictated by how fast they can move it. So we have a certain range of speed that they're supposed to hit with their reps without a lot of fall off. And then they get to load the bar as heavy as they can staying within that range. This works very well for multitudes of reasons. It allows athletes to a move fast. I always have said, um, move or lift fast, be fast, lift. So be slow. So very simple, uh, layman terms. But uh, our athletes that can move heavier weights faster are always better than our athletes that can move weights, heavy weights slower, right? So it just makes sense. So velocity-based training with our concentric, focus on moving the bar quickly. Uh, it's also a good way to see if athletes are recovered or not. So it's a, a, a double-edged sword in that sense and knocks out two things for us. And then typically what we'll do is add the ISO in after that. So we'll move, uh, think about it in a set. So a movement where you're going, uh, from the strength movement, getting one rep or one, uh, whatever reps you program in, moving directly to the ISO. And then we always have a dynamic plyometric after that. So somewhat of a French contrast, if you're familiar with that, uh, without the accelerated portion, but we will hit a, for example, a Bulgarian split squat, uh, lighter weights trying to move quickly. And then we'll go directly into a pin ISO, overcoming ISO. This is where you're pulling as hard as you can, but you can't you can't beat the bar or beat the object. You can pull as hard as you can and it keeps you right in place. So you're able to exert as much force as possible in a static position. Um, so for example, again, we go Bulgarian split squat straight into that um, split stance ISO pull. So pulling as hard as you can, a couple of different ways to do this. You can do a longer duration if you want to see how much force they can create over time. Um, or you can obviously do a shorter one to try to peak that as quickly as possible. These are very uh, demanding on the CNS, high effort. Uh, the athlete's going to be out of breath and tired after this rep. So we just do one rep each leg. And then uh, for this example, we would go directly into a, a split jump and switch. So basically hitting the same movement pattern, getting con concentric focus, moving fast, hitting an isometric, uh, pushing as hard as you can quickly, and then going into a apply metric and having that fired up nervous system and trying to put that all together into a quick movement getting off the ground quickly and being explosive. Uh, that is kind of the potion we're working with right now. A lot of different ways to explore this and develop it over time as we will. Um, but that is the main way that we do this. And this can be done with any movement and any combination of movement to stay within the 
the dynamics of if you choose a split squat, I'd recommend doing your ISO in a split position and your jump in a split position. If you're doing bilateral, uh, keep it the same there as well. Give the athlete an opportunity to get that those positions in that range of motion repeatedly through the different muscle actions. Obviously, the plyometric is going to have a high eccentric. So if you look at it uh, as a whole, you're going to get the concentric, you're going to get the isometric, and you're going to get the eccentric. And it allows you to develop an overall uh, dynamic athlete. And uh, another thought press process I think about and why isometrics I think are really important in the gym is – when an athlete is out playing their sport, typically they're getting a lot of concentric and eccentric uh, reps when it comes to jumping and landing, uh, sprinting, uh, contact hitting, if that's in your sport. Uh, but there's not a lot of opportunities to develop the isometric portion of the movement. So when I, we have to think about filling buckets that aren't being filled and what can help the athlete get an advantage and stay healthy. And this is one way to mitigate load, uh, still drive out the CNS and allow the athlete to work on aspects of performance that they most likely aren't getting in sport or in their traditional high school weight room. So that would be my short answer to that. That's how we're using it. Um, if there are any further questions, let me know. Appreciate you guys tuning in. going to be putting out a lot of these short podcasts, just answering specific questions. So again, if you have a question, hit up the Instagram, Hanson Athletics, uh, or if you can drop it right here, if you're listening on Spotify, go ahead and drop it. I uh, appreciate you guys taking the time to listen and support Hanson Athletics. As always, if you're in Pocatello and looking to take your performance to the next level, hit us up, schedule a free intro assessment. Those are booking up quickly, so grab yours today. We also have uh, assessment testing and profiling for athletes if you want to get a good baseline at where you're at. And that offer extends as well to clubs and organizations. So if you have a club or a team that needs to be tested uh, in the season, beginning of season, end of season, whatever, let us know. We'll come and test you and give you some insights into where your team or a club as a whole is struggling and uh, how you could potentially improve that. And lastly, we can work with you online. We work with athletes all over the country uh, remotely. Uh, if that's something you're interested in, hit us up as well. Uh, we'll write you a program and allow you to um, train like we do and drop videos in and get coach feedback and all that good stuff. So again, appreciate you guys. Have a good day and let me know if you have any questions. Coach D out.